So this is the task at hand. Uh, this is obviously top of the spindle. This is the main connector. Uh, we have three leads here. This this lead uh, is the W. This is the Y, and this is the U. And then this pin is is left floating in this instance. And sometimes on certain uh, spindles, it's connected to the case ground of the spindle itself. But in this case, it's not. It's just not connected to anything. Um, so anyway, the task at hand is to uh, measure the stator resistance. And so basically the spindle has two main components, which is the rotor, which is contiguous with the part that spins, and then the stator, which is the windings of the motor that stay stationary. And uh, the VFD, specifically my VFD, really wants to know what the stator resistance is for the spindle, and I have no idea, and I can't find it published anywhere. And I emailed the source I got this from, and they didn't know either. And they supposedly were going to forward the question to the manufacturer, and I have never heard back from them. So I've so pretty much given up getting that information, and so we're going to try to measure it. And uh, these are the tools, and uh, you can start laughing now. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, this is the, the classic Harbor Freight uh, uh, multimeter. Uh, you know, I actually like it, you know. <laughs> I don't know. You, you, yeah, stop laughing. Anyway, it's, it's not a true RMS meter at all. And then this is the, it's sort of backup. Also another probably quasi-junk meter. But these are the meters I have. So, made in China. Um, so that's what we'll be doing. We're going to do a four wire measurement to try to measure the theoretically quite low value of resistance in each of the windings there. So we can at least enter a number into the VFD configuration that's somewhat close. Um, so let's get started. So here's the setup. Uh, this is a, a 12 volt DC battery from a uh, some uh, Makita type drill. Uh, it's going to be our voltage source for this test. I have it wired up through here um, through a, <laughs> I've attached a, a 500 ohm resistor. It's going to limit the current to be quite small. It's, uh, I think I measured it already at uh, 23 milliamps. Um, so we, we're basically, the, the, what we're going to be doing here is sending a small current through the uh, through one of the windings, one at one of one winding at a time, and then we're going to measure the voltage drop across that um, with the other meter. So one meter is set up to do uh, milliamps, and it's actually in line. It's part of the circuit, and uh, kind of see here. Uh, it's basically the the amount of current that's flowing through that 500 ohm uh, resistor. So it's about 23 milliamps. And we're going to use that current to, to go through the one winding at a time and then measure the voltage drop. And that should allow us to calculate the resistance of each winding. So here's a schematic of the setup that we have. Uh, so this is the 12 volt battery. Uh, it's wired directly then into this amp meter, which is in line with the circuit measuring the current. And then we head over to this little 500 ohm resistor. And the only reason this resistor is here is to limit the amount of current flowing through this circuit so that we don't short out the battery. And then we come directly into the windings of the motor. And so in this case, we're doing the winding between uh, V and U. Uh, and then this second vol voltmeter uh, is just here to measure the voltage drop across the winding. And so you wouldn't want these probes to be, you know, further out or somewhere else. You, you want them to be just across the uh, winding that you're trying to measure the resistance of. Uh, you're trying to isolate it. And then once we have that, we know the current that's running through here and we know the voltage drop across the winding. So using Ohm's law, we should be able to calculate the, the resistance. All right, so here's a bit of the setup. Hopefully you can see those meters. Um, right now I have the, the small 23 milli milliamp uh, current going through uh, 
the coils from W to U. And uh, now I'm trying to try to um, measure the voltage drop across the, the two points. millivolts. All right, now we're going to test the same between the W and the Y. Same protocol here. I'll call that 31.6, 31.7 millivolts cool and lastly we're going between the y and the u same same story Whoa. 31.6 pretty stable all right so uh, it's good that they're very consistent, that we would kind of expect that. Um, and so let's do the calculation and get the resistance. So uh, based on the calculations, we have 1.34, 1.35 uh, ohms uh, for a state of resistance. So that's you know, sort of right on the boundary of what these uh, multimeters can do. Basically, they, un under one ohm, they just can't measure resistance any lower than that, uh, or I wouldn't trust them. Um, but I'm just curious to see what a direct measurement would produce. So this meter is coming in at about 1.6, oops, 1.7. <laughs> just so ham-fisted. Trying just to get it stable. Yeah, 1.6. Let's see what the other meter says. So that one kind of floats. And it's half of it's me floating. I just can't keep the trote steady. This one says about 1.3, so there you go. 1.2, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I think I'll trust the four wire method slightly more than either of these meters, but maybe it's a bit of a win for the Klein tools. So that's it for this video. Um, I'll leave a link down below to uh, some more info on this four wire measuring system. Uh, there's lots of good stuff on YouTube about it. Uh, I think my next video will be about setting up my VFD and uh, all of its wondrous configurations to get this thing up and running. Finally, thanks for watching.